Hey everyone, Rob here from Gunfather Milsim, bringing you a follow-up video on my Silverback Tech 41P. Um, if you recall, I bought this like three months ago. Um, it was in a stock form. I did an initial impressions video, just took it out to the field, and it was stuck at 1.3 joule, which is really not enough for a sniper rifle. But I hadn't gotten the spring end to, to bump it up to the field limit yet. It performed well, it had very good accuracy, but just not that much range due to lack of FPS. Since then, I ordered uh, the Silverback 13mm M160 spring. It was uh, $16 from Evike, I believe. Check my notes. Nope, $12. Okay, it was $12 from Evike. And uh, that one, the installation was a breeze, and that brought the jewels right up to 2.81 with 0.45 gram longbow BBs, which is what I use. And um, so that's right at the field limit, like literally right at the limit. So perfect, no cutting of springs, no mess with anything, right at the field limit. So I finally got a chance to field this last week. Uh, put some barrel cloth on there as a camouflage. Um, honestly, I, I should have put some real vegetation in this to, to make it look better. I did a video on barrel cloths recently. I, I was just feeling lazy that day. Um, I, I live in Eastern Nebraska and in July, it's really hot and the field gets really thick. And uh, I think this particular day of the field, it was about 90, but with about 90% humidity. So it was brutally hot and I just wasn't in the mood. So here's the question. How did the gun perform in the field at an appropriate 2.8 joule at the field limit? It was shooting uh, lights out. It, it shot amazing. Um, early on, I was having a little bit of, of trouble. Uh, as with all things, when you're dealing with a airsoft sniper rifle, you have to deploy it correctly if you're going to be successful and the game modes just didn't give me an opportunity to be very effective just in the positioning and the way the field laid out then in the later game i got in a really good spot where i was basically defending and i had some really good lanes and it just i think i racked up like 12 kills in a relatively short period of time my teammates were really impressed with this performance i was really pleased with it um, it was just excellent so let's talk a little bit more about that in comparison um, my old sniper rifle was an ANK M24, really affordable sniper rifle, they're like 120 bucks. It was highly upgraded. I wanted to do a comparison between this gun and that gun. I wanted to do something a little more scientific, but honestly, it was brutally hot, so I said, fuck it. <laughs> I, I've sold that gun to a, a teammate of mine, but I really tuned it up before I, I sold it to him. I mean, it was it was performing perfectly, real low standard deviation of the FPS. It was just flawless. So we took this gun and his gun and we went out to the field and we started picking things to shoot at and working our way out farther and farther and further to see kind of what comparison we had for range and accuracy between this, a very expensive airsoft sniper rifle that, you know, out of the box, these are, this is $390, it's, it's not cheap, and his, which is essentially $120. Granted, his is upgraded. Um, what we found was, as we shot farther, that they were both pretty much the same, like neck and neck, all the way out to about 80 yards. At 80 yards, there was no difference in the range. There was a difference in accuracy, but I'm telling you, it was slight. And at that range, you know, airsoft sniper rifles, airsoft BBs, they just lose all their accuracy at the end of their range. They just start going every which way. And if his is deviating, let's say at a, let's just give it a number, his deviation is a nine. This one's deviation is a seven. Okay, so it's not that much better. It's only marginally better. And it's also only marginally better at a range where it's really not that relevant anymore because you're at the end of your range where your accuracy is the worst. So we tried to shoot a little bit beyond 80 yards. Um, and although the gun could technically shoot that far quite easily, it lost so much accuracy at that range, it really isn't worth talking about because there's just no consistency and I would just never take that shot in a game. There was no point to it. So what we're looking at is 80 yards of really good accuracy, which is about typical for an airsoft sniper rifle. So why, in my opinion, is this thing so much better than that A&K 24? Um, it's, it's all the little things, it's a little fit and finish. Um, the magazine, as I talked about in the first video I did, holds 48 with 20 in the tube, and you reload it and to a full 48, and you have 68 BBs. I bought two more of these magazines, so I have three total. I never went beyond the first one. It's a solid magazine. It, it feeds flawlessly every time. The bolt cycles really well. 
Um, it feels really strong. You're just real confident in it. You feel like you can, you know, beat on it and not have to worry about breaking anything. I can't say the same for the ANK M24 or my old school Tokyo Maru VSR10. So it's just better built. It's just sturdier. And the fact that you can just abuse the gun, rack the bolt, and it'll feed every time, it just gives you a lot of confidence when you're using it in the field. Um, a happy bonus I found was if you look, see if you can get, here's the, your hop-up adjustment, hop-up wheel. And you can hear the clicks, they're pretty positive. I didn't have to make a lot of adjustments in the field on my hop up, but when I did from shot to shot, it was very easy for me to just click, click, turn it up, and then just send that next BB, and you, I would immediately see the effect of that adjustment. Um, that, I don't, I've never had a airsoft sniper rifle where I could adjust the hop up that quickly on the fly, and that easily, and where it sits, the way I shoot this gun, my thumb is already resting on it. It's just right there, ready to go. So what is the final takeaway? Um, I've heard people call the Silverback TAC-41 the VSR-10 killer, because the VSR-10 is the traditional kind of ideal airsoft sniper rifle. Is this going to knock it off its throne? Um, I believe it is, and I believe it's fair to call it the VSR-10 killer. This gun just really performs well. It, it just rocks. It's reliable. Um, the magazine is far superior to any other airsoft sniper rifle magazines out there. The hop-up adjustment is phenomenal. The clicks are distinct. It stays put. You can switch them on the fly. And the bolt is just, it's just uh, real solid and easy to, easy to manipulate. I just, I just like this setup. Um, am I done with it? Uh, no. I think I'm going to do some more upgrades. I'm going to do some, some stuff with quieting down the whole system. Maybe mess around with some different piston heads, try to get it a lot quieter. It was already, it wasn't particularly loud, but I think that's the only real hurdle I have left. So the gun's $390, the spring is $12, and that's it. Uh, aside from a $15 barrel cap that I also bought from Evike. So what are you out? Uh, $417, and you're, you're competitive with the top end airsoft snipers that I've seen out there. This is, this is gonna be a hard one to beat. So if you like my content, please like, subscribe, hit the little notification bell, um, or better yet, uh, support my content by buying some of my merchandise. Go to my store, dyshowtactical.com. That's where you can buy Gunfather Milson patches or any of my bungee slings that I sell, including this one, which is the uh, two-point. See, works like that. Um, I sell these there, and anything you purchase there helps support my content and helps me put out more videos. Thanks for watching.